became Seminole? Became Seminole. And in fact, the word Seminole is not even uh, an Indian word. It is derived from the Spanish word uh, cimarron, meaning runaway slave. And so from the beginning, you don't have an Indian tribe. It was a multi-ethnic coalition. Historical evidence documents their close relationship. Blacks became chiefs, signed treaties, and served on the tribal council. They intermarried. They were equals, Opala says, and the Indians depended on them as warriors and interpreters. So there absolutely is proof of the black Seminole importance to the tribe. Absolutely. There's a lot of intelligence information that passes back to Washington. For instance, uh, General Jessup, the commanding uh, uh, general, writes back at one point to the War Department and says, the Negroes rule the Indians. What he was referring to was the fact that no significant decision was ever taken in the Seminole councils unless the, the black members uh, agreed to it. When the Red and Black Seminoles were forced out of Florida in the 1830s, they traveled together hundreds and hundreds of miles by boat and on foot, passing through this barren place on the banks of the Arkansas River all the way to Oklahoma. It was a long and difficult journey referred to as their trail of tears for the many who died along the way. Now, nearly 200 years later, comes the $56 million payment from the federal government to compensate the tribe for those lost Florida lands. But the black Seminoles can't share in it because the government and the tribe say they were slaves of the red Seminoles back then and as slaves could not have owned land. Program. Joe Opala, who has worked to preserve their legacy, says that's wrong. The black Seminoles fought side by side, died, bled for those lands in Florida. Uh, they've, they've been together, they've been good brothers and good neighbors. Uh, for three centuries. It makes no sense now to say they're not Indians. Our ancestors were some of the most fiercest fighters during the war. During the Indian War? Yes. Due to the fact that they knew if they were recaptured, they were going into slavery, mm -hmm. back in slavery. Bud Crockett and his sister Polly Gentry traced their Seminole roots back to their great-grandmother Dora Davis, who came to Oklahoma on the Trail of Tears. But family legend and physical resemblance aren't enough. Today you have to be able to prove your Indian heritage, which is hard for most black Seminoles because of something called the Dawes Rolls, a government census of sorts created in the late 1800s which separated the tribe into the blood or red Seminoles and the freedmen or black Seminoles. Intermarriage made no difference, as Polly and Bud discovered with their ancestors. If you had any black blood in you whatsoever, you were a freedman. So it didn't matter how much Indian blood you had. Just right. Any black blood, right. you went on a separate roll. Right. And on the black mm -hmm. Seminole roll, it doesn't list that you have any Indian blood. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Did you feel equal to the blood Seminoles? Sure, at one time, yes. Still do. Still do. But when money and the government entered into the picture, everything changed. Everything changed. If they don't have any Indian blood then, or prove it, then uh, they're not looked at as Indians. Putting aside that history of togetherness, the blood Seminoles are going by the book, that is, the government's book. They're relying on that 100-year-old census which separated the black Seminoles from the rest of the tribe in determining just who gets the government money today. For Seminole leaders like Chief Jerry Haney, this is what it now comes down to. Proof have met several black Seminole women, some of whom look Indian and yet they can't participate in the benefits. They know they have Indian blood. I'm well aware of that. The uh, the individuals uh, that I know of that uh, say that, uh, you're absolutely right. They show a lot of Indian in them. But um, it's up to the individual to prove that they are Indians. And this is where the problem is. They can't prove it with the Dawes Commission role. What happened to your front porch? You have no steps. No steps. steps. No steps there, no steps here. And I need a whole house here. Polly Gentry has lived her entire life on land her grandmother received a hundred years ago as a full member of the tribe. All Seminoles, red and black, were given land in Oklahoma. 
Polly says she could use some of the $56 million judgment fund to repair her house. My husband decided he's going to put some bricks around it, and he got, as far as you see them bricks is now, and he had a heart attack. And it's been like this? And it's been like this, because you couldn't get nobody to fix it. Do you have the money to fix it? No. No, Lord, no. So did you apply for a benefit? Yeah, but they wouldn't give it to me. The Seminoles have $56 million coming from the government, and how much of it did you want? I want enough that I can get me a house built where I can live comfortable, because it ain't no comfortable here. This whole business of degree of Indian blood uh, is just a concoction. It's just an excuse now uh, that's been dreamed up of late in order to exclude the blacks from membership in the tribe. Uh, I can tell you this, a hundred years ago, uh, or 150 years ago, Seminole Indians would not have been talking about uh, whether or not this black person has Indian blood. It simply wouldn't have mattered. They were Seminoles. You know what the motion is? You can go ahead and vote on it. So. For more than a hundred of those years, black Seminoles held four of the 28 seats on the tribal council. But that ended at a meeting like this one in the summer of 2000, when the red Seminoles voted the blacks out. Sylvia Davis, who was one of the four black council members at the time, says it was humiliating. It's been hard for me to sit there and um, listen to the way they talk to the freedmen. It's been very hard for me. What do they say? The racist name that they be using toward them, calling them animals' names, cows, stomping feet, roaring at them, telling them to get out. They don't want you. That's right. They'll tell you to go back to Africa. Why do you think the freedmen, the black Seminoles, belong as part of this tribe? Because we have people that die along the trail, just like any other people in the, in the nation. But I guess they're saying, yes, thank you, you fought alongside us in Florida. That was 200 years ago. It's time for us to separate. I would just let them know that we have all rights within the Seminole Nation. But Chief Haney says many of the black Seminoles and even some of the blood Seminoles weren't interested in being part of the tribe until it included benefits, well, namely a piece of that $56 million government payout. The tribe wanted to have uh, an Indian tribe that was all Indian tribe. There are too many freedmen. I think there's a lot of freedmen out there now that are eligible to join, but have not joined because there are no benefits. But you think if there were benefits for them, suddenly freedmen would be coming from yes. all across the country? Yes. Let me tell you what it looks like from the outside, though. It looks like the freedmen fought wars, died with you, moved on the Trail of Tears from Florida to Oklahoma with you. And now suddenly there's a big pot of money Let's exclude them. That, that may be true to some extent, but I don't think that's all of the uh, reasons for what has happened. He also says the red and black Seminoles have just grown apart over the years and have little in common today. But that's not how Sylvia Davis sees it. She's hired Will and John Veeley, two young attorneys who specialize in Indian law. They're suing the government on behalf of the black Seminoles. The entire tribe received a county in exchange for a state. When that was individually allotted, all Seminoles, including the black Seminoles, received their individual allotments. When the United States awarded 56 million, shouldn't the same people that received the land before also receive the money? The tribe's the same. The Bureau of Indian Affairs chose not to speak on camera, citing the pending lawsuit. However, in a letter to us, they say that these kinds of issues are up to the tribe. Eligibility for the judgment fund, the letter says, may depend upon whether a current member is descended from a member of the tribe as the tribe existed in 1823. However, the letter says, deciding who's in and who's out is solely within the purview of the tribe. But the black Seminoles say they won't go quietly. They continue trying to cast votes and participate in tribal meetings without success. Bud Crockett says he won't be denied his heritage, but he won't beg for it either. It's not all about the money. It's about setting the history record straight of our, our ancestry and our history and what legacy we intend to leave for our kids. Since the black Seminoles were removed, the government has cut off all federal funding to the tribe. That's persuaded some, like Chief Haney, to say they should be allowed back in. But he still says they're not entitled to that $56 million.